So over the last few years that uh, we've all been working together, uh, John has really worked on perfecting a, a toolkit that uh, really anybody, especially in the progressive movement, who's not getting the attention of mainstream media, who needs to be kind of in more in charge of their own broadcasting, uh, really should know about this. So John is going to go through his toolkit one tool at a time and uh, explain uh, what we need to know. So thanks, John. And well, thank you, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. I, it, it really is. Actually, I've been wanting to do this video for a long time. Um, yeah. I, I did another one previously that was more kind of for media, uh, independent journalists. This is this this what I'm going to talk about now is more for candidates or people who know candidates that need some serious help with how to be on air. And most progressive candidates need something. Uh, oh, density. Look at you, man. Thank hey, you so much. Look at that. 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Oh, my That's gosh. Great. Um, so we're going we're gonna to talk about, about what candidates need. And just a big shout out to Jim Creary, who I will be interviewing tomorrow on We the People. We had technical mm -hmm. issues with him the last time because he wasn't ready to be on air. And he was trying to do it from an iPad in a place that had crappy connection. And mm -hmm. that's a waste of a candidate's time. All right. And that's, that's a waste of volunteers' time, a waste of everybody's time when a candidate's not able to be live on air. Candidate, mm -hmm. especially progressive candidates, we need all the airtime we can get. It's not like CNN's calling up Jim Cray going, we'd love to have you on. Wolf Blitzer's dying. I mean, that, that doesn't happen. So they have to rely on independent media, and independent media has to be able to work with them in whatever modes they have, right, whatever they can get. Um, so I'm going to – here's the list of things – that candidates should buy so that they look and sound good. Now, good internet is, you know, you gotta have good internet somewhere. And that means you gotta have at least five megabits per second upstream, all right? Uh, before I go any farther, I wanna, I wanna say this. Candidates need people who know tech to help them. <laughs> A candidate yes. shouldn't have to be doing all this crap on their own. So if you know a candidate or a progressive candidate and, and they don't have a tech person and you are tech oriented, that is what they need. All right. They shouldn't have to be thinking about this stuff. Uh, secondly, I realize that candidates are trying to do this, progressive candidates anyway, are trying to do this without taking big money or without taking, a lot of them don't have any money. So um, I tried to do this on the cheap. This is the, these are not expensive items. These are prosumer and consumer items. Uh, so be careful with them. They're not rugged like, you know, the expensive items. But uh, they, they worked for Bernie 2016 TV two years ago. Some of those same pieces are still working today. Uh, and and you're, you're basically going to be taken care of for about 250 bucks. So that's, that's where you're at, which is still under the amount needed to run a campaign without starting a pack. Okay, so that's important. We learned that from Larry earlier today, everybody. Mm -hmm. So anyway, shout out to Jim because he's now looking and sounding fantastic. He went and got out mm -hmm. the things he needed. He got lighting. He got a person. I got a, He got a tech person named Nick. Thank you, Nick. Yes. So that says indie media on it because they didn't change the slide. Doesn't really matter. Candidates need to be able to use these things: Skype, FaceTime, Google Hangout, Zoom, YouTube Live, uh, HOA, which is a Hangout on Air, uh, Facebook Live, Periscope, or they need to have somebody capable of helping them with these things. All right. Uh, you need to have a computer that's capable of streaming. Not all computers are. Uh, most laptops that are made within the last five years are totally fine. Yeah. Uh, it, it, iPads, unless they're brand new, are, are generally not going to work. And, and they generally don't have enough battery power. And they're generally not designed for streaming or for video at all. They're just kind of weird devices. So I know a lot of people like iPads because they're really quick to carry around. But they really don't work well for a candidate who is being interviewed. A laptop is really your best bet for mobile. If you just have to use your phone, phones are better than pads. All mm -hmm. right. They got better audio. They got better cameras. They got better signal strength. Um, and then you need to get yourself something to stick your phone on. Because propping a phone up with a book is not gonna, gonna cut it. Um, wired internet connection, all is what you should be using. You really a candidate should be doing this in, a, in an office or a room in their house where they've got a wired internet connection. You say, well, I can't reach my router. Go buy a fifty foot Ethernet cable. That's what I did. Yeah, just run it through the freaking house, right? Yep. Um, and info at uphillmedia.org. If you're a candidate or know a candidate that needs help, happy to talk to you. I want to see every, I want to see all of our candidates look and sound good. 
because that's what we need for them to have clips that we can cut out of their interviews and usable material to help promote the candidate. That's really what we're going for here. When we do interviews on We the People and the candidate doesn't have a good internet connection, sometimes there's just nothing they can do about it. There's just not in an area with good connection or they have crappy light or a terrible camera. I don't cut out the pieces of that and post them on the web, the short clips, because they're just not worth it. It's just not good. Um, so if a candidate is ready to go, then we can take that material and use it, and they can use it as promotional material, which is a lot cheaper than paying for a, a professional ad, right? So um, we're going to talk about some of the pieces. These are some of the same notes. Hang on a second. I talked about that. I wasn't going through my slides here, everybody. But I, all the other ones I did, I did I, I like canned, and I would take breaks. This is the first one I've tried live, so fun, <laughs> fun. Thank you all for being here. And I will stop because this goes a little long. I'll stop at breaks and we'll take questions if anybody has questions. Uh, Great. The, the camera that every candidate should own, the webcam, is a Logitech C920. Now, they've confused things. They've made a bunch of versions of it. And I've tried to show if you go on Amazon, okay, yell at me. I said, Amazon, we want to divest from Amazon. Pick your place wherever you have decided that is morally acceptable to purchase a camera from <laughs> go get your camera there just make sure that you are not getting the super expensive version you don't need the extra pack you don't need the gaming version what the hell they have a gaming version but it, it, i found it for the the normal one is 46 bucks they have another one that's like 60 dollars. that's a a newer model that's a little better that's all you need as long as it says hd on it 1080p uh, and it's the C920. That's the one you're looking for. Industry standard. You can beat the crap out of them, really. I have. Um, and and uh, if that's all you can afford, you're done. Because the microphone will work on that. All right? Uh, so that's what I recommend. Notice on my, my picture here. <laughs> I put some, That's a nice touch. Thank you. I put some googly eyes. This is my suggestion for, for candidates. Because you're going to have to get used to looking at the, the Cyclops eye, the camera eye, which is weird because you want to look at the person in the web conference, whether it's Zoom or Hangouts or whatever you're talking to them in Skype. And then you're looking down mostly or you're, look, you're not looking at the audience. That's not good for a candidate either because then people are trying to listen to you and like, what the hell is he looking at? Not looking mm -hmm. at me, right? So if you buy a pair of googly eyes or draw a pair of eyes on some paper and cut them out and tape them to the... the where the microphone ends are on the camera, then you've turned your camera into a face. <laughs> and you'll substantially be staring at the nose, because that's what we do anyway. And it's, it's helpful. So there, I just wanted to, okay. And that's a, actually, that's a, this 56 bucks. 56 to 60 bucks is your choice for the, the camera there. That's what you want to know. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Um, there's also an application, get your tech person to, install this this is very important with the logitech there's an application this is the apple one it's just the logitech um, a webcam controller and it has advanced features that will let you control the exposure and the color of the light and that is super ass helpful because if you're in a place like larry i've got to get on larry about his place where he's always seems to be in the sun it's just mm -hmm. like he's 10 he's feet away glowing. from the sun. yeah he glows uh it looks like, what was it, Jarrell from the original Superman? Is it, anyway, uh, uh, it, with this application, you can lower the exposure, change the brightness, change the color. Um, it's very helpful to, if you're on, if you're going somewhere or have to be in a room that's got low light, you can't do anything about it, right? So uh, make sure you install that app. Have your tech person look at it. It's very easy to understand. Look at the GUI. It's always going to tell everybody. All right, so that's the Logitech camera. Do we have any questions at this point? Uh, no, doesn't look like it. Fine, fine then. I will just keep going. <laughs> well, there is. Actually, there's a question about, but it's talking about getting, uh, for candidates being able to get past their security and firewalls to be able to go live, like on YouTube, something like that. I don't know if we're going to cover. I think you're going to you're gonna talk about going live on YouTube a little bit later. Sure, but are we talking? Can, what candidates have security and firewalls? Who, who's lucky to? I don't know. Are, uh, this was one can one candidate cannot get past their security and firewalls to go live. She, this is someone. This is Mike from Green Party of Santa Clara County. He does interviews. Go somewhere else. 
I don't know. I don't know where you're where you're at that you're doing the interview. That's my go somewhere else. Really, find it. Find a volunteer that has a place, or you know, uh, my my suggestion really is if you're if you are a progressive candidate and you have any kind of union backing, uh, local labor union, workers union, steel workers unions, they they generally have like a a place. Mm-hmm. Right, like we use the steel workers union uh, with the Lynn County Democratic Party to just go get some volunteer work done, mm-hmm. and it's a nice, it's good enough where you could say, "Hey guys, can I go here when I need to do an interview?" and and you know, offer them, uh, you know, we promotion. You got, you know, how to work that anyway. Whatever you do, just, yeah. just uh, be their friend. That's my suggestion. Mm-hmm. Find another space. If just give him my email, info at uphillmedia.org. He or she, whoever they are, and mm-hmm. happy to, to talk with them. But mm-hmm. if they're trying to get through firewalls, it sounds like they're trying to do these interviews from work. And if they have firewalls like that that won't allow for upstream, that's throttling. You're never going to get around that. Your network admin's going to be like, no way. So, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's not going to happen. So I would go somewhere else, definitely. Uh, any other questions for that? Nope, that'll do for now, and I'm putting out the the email so that people can contact us with more specific ones. Awesome, awesome. The next thing we're going to look at is actually the most important item. I talked about the camera. Well, okay, camera. You got to have a camera if you're going to be doing video calls, right? Um, mm-hmm. uh, but this is in, in in the world of video, audio is more important, right? Other than actually having a camera. If you have a crappy camera but your audio is great, that's fine. People would rather stick around and listen to you sound good than listen to you sound crappy if you have an HD 4K picture, right? So uh, the microphone that I recommend so that you all sound like gold is the Blue Yeti USB microphone. This is the platinum color. You can get many color choices and it's 130 bucks. This is just the USB model. Both, uh, we, all of us use one. Mm-hmm. Yay. All three of us use the Yeti. Uh, it's portable. Here, actually, Laura Livengood has hers up in the air. That's good because I can't move my there. See how beautiful it is. I've got the silver one. Joseph has got the black one. The lovely yes. Yeti yeah. USB microphone. <laughs> it's the cutest microphone ever. They're like little. They're like little R2D2s. They really are. And they they even make specific carrying cases for these things. I was looking mm-hmm. online for that. So if you are mm-hmm. traveling, if you can't travel, you can get a nice case that sticks in the case. It's uh, it, so it's that's the microphone you want. It's and they sound really nice. They do, they do. <laughs> it it gets like a little me. complicated. So again, info at uphillmedia.org. It's got a lot of buttons, right? But that's good. The most control your yeti. I like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> control your Yeti. The, the most important uh, aspect is the pattern choice. You want to make sure you're on the cardioid mode because if you choose any of the other modes, you will be picking up sounds from everywhere. Mm-hmm. All right? And again, this is what a tech person is for. Uh, they make other mics. And honestly, the, the Blue Ice is a, a less expensive if you're on a budget and you want to pay about half price, the, the blue ice is, is decent. It does not sound like the Yeti, but it's, it's decent. And it's going to sound better than the Logitech microphone, and it's going to sound better than your computer's crappy, whatever old microphone. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so there you go. Talk about that. Remember the Logitech, when I used to use my Logitech microphone on the camera, and you can hear me clear in the kitchen of my old house, which yes. is like 60 feet away, and I was coughing, and he was like, are you okay? It's like, wait. <laughs> Right, right. It's 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 they're designed everything. they're designed to pick up to be a really good audio, pick up everything, mm-hmm. and you really don't have a lot of control over it. That's why the Blue Yeti is great; it has gain, right? And so, right. Gonna... Al wants to know if it performs well in windy conditions. I don't. It's really a studio mic, not really an outdoor mic, right? Yeah, I wouldn't be using this thing out. I mean, if you're setting up in an outdoor place, then you get a windscreen, Al. Yeah. And they do make Blue Yeti windscreens. They're just bigger. I've been wanting to get one for this thing. It would be helpful. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, get a windscreen. And, yes, you can get the the standard windscreen or you can get the, the one that looks like an actual, like, fur <laughs> if you're out in, like, gale force winds and you're doing an interview. But it really looks like a Yeti. <laughs> yeah, it, it really does. It really would. That's, that's, that's funny. Yeah. Um, so we're going to look at setup and placement now because this is one of the, the most difficult things. So this is my high-tech graphic skills, <laughs> right? 
And what we're looking at there is the, 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 the most important thing is to get the C920 camera at eye level to you as you're sitting up like a normal human being in a chair. All mm-hmm. right. And that can be accomplished by anything. Books, right? A stand, whatever you've got. And if you're if you're using a laptop and you bought the 920 as a as a, a better camera, then you just set it right on top. But mm-hmm. you may want to get something to set it on and put it behind the laptop so that you have more distance. You want it at least an arm's length away, and you want that because right now my camera is a little bit more than arm's length away. I have to lean in to touch it. If not, I'd be really close in like this, and it would be really hard to get a crop shot, and you'd be really disgusted by looking at my face all close up. And, th- and that's what happens. You want, you want enough <laughs> frame around you, and you want, you want to give whoever is interviewing you as much space around you as possible. The room that I have, the head space in the frame, the bottom space that we can put a lower third here, right? That's what makes you not look like a giant-headed, scary person when you do an interview on Skype, right? Whether it's with CNN or TYT or us. So that's the most, that's one of the, that's that, that aspect ratio, that depth of field is very, very important. When the, when the, the network television, they're eight feet away. It's supposed to be eight feet. Mm-hmm. Right. And then, and then they can get whatever shot they need. So, um, the Yeti, this, here's, here's mine right here. Mine's on a boom arm that comes off the table real easy. So I'm not gonna move it around. It's it's a finger length from my my face, right? Because because you get that proximity effect, hey, right? That's th- that sibilance, the depth. Th- that's what makes your voice sound better. Right? The farther back I get from it, the more you get ambient noise, and the less powerful, the less awesome I sound, <laughs> right? And that's that's important for a candidate. I can't, I mean, they don't need to sound, you know, like a dictator, but they need to sound like they're confident, like they're in command and like their voice is being heard. They, and that's, that's part of what good audio does. No, I want to listen to this guy or this gal, right? All right. So whatever you need to do with your setup and also remember that you're not going to be typing. So when you're being interviewed, it's okay if you can't reach your mouse so that you can get the right camera distance and put that microphone somewhere here right best you can all right know your space what else do i got here i'm wearing headphones don't do that i'm wearing my big old sony headphones and i know that a lot of people have the big headphones it's okay if you're a candidate that's what you have but you have other options if you have the apple uh earbuds fine those are fine. What I recommend, if you want to go all out, is this. This is just one piece, but this is the MEE M6 over the ear sports earbuds. And we'll get these links. I didn't put the links in the description. Sorry, Laura Live. I'm good. That's okay. These are cheap. If you just uh, MEE over the ear sports earbuds or go to whatever place you want to shop at and look Google over the ear sports earbuds. Because that's what they do. They go over the ear. And then nobody can see them. It's just like the $3,000 ones that the MSM guys wear. Except it's $17.99 or $19.99. It's pretty cheap. It's less than 20 bucks, And it comes with a whole bunch of different ear pieces to get to fit. You just take the one, put it in your ear, take the other one. I tie the other one in a ball. And just stuff it in my shirt. It actually comes with a clip, but I lost mine. Right. <laughs> Jim, Jim Query has one of those now. He, mm-hmm. And he looks great. You can't it, when you're doing the conversation. You can't even tell you're, you're, you've got a earpiece in, right? If you if you buy a splitter here, actually, hey, I I have graphics. Here's here's what they look like. There you go. The ME Audio Sports Fi M6 noise isolating in ear headphones with memory wire. Mm-hmm. But you just put one in one ear. You don't do both. No, I only do one. Mm-hmm. Makes me feel more like a real anchor. <laughs> and then you're going to need to get an extension. Definitely get an, an, an ear uh, headphone extension. 
And if you've got a tech and you've got other people in the room with you being interviewed, get one of these. It's the best thing you'll ever get. It's just a splitter. And that way they can plug in their headphones and listen to the whole conversation. Oh, nice. That's what we deal with the field unit, Laura, so that everybody okay. can hear what's going on. All right. I just got a, a two splitter, but that's cool. Nice. I mean, that's fine. That works. Mm -hmm. All right. The, the next thing we need to talk about is light. You want to avoid the WITSEC look. You want to avoid uh, looking yellow, the jaundice look. This is an example of a light bulb for a candidate that you would want to use. This is just a 30-watt complex fluorescent. It doesn't need to be uh, high wattage, depending on what you've got going on, but the, it's the Kelvin that's important. See that number where it says 5400K? That's daylight light, bright white light. And that's what you want. You don't want, most, most of us in our, our uh, homes, we have mellow yellow lights. And we don't like the bright white ones. So offices have the bright white lights that get irritating after a while, right? But they now have daylight color, which is more like natural sun. That's around 5,000 Kelvin. That's what you want. You replace your normal bulbs with those bulbs, and you now have good light for nighttime. If you're doing an interview during the day, the sun is always best, but the sun is also unpredictable, right? So putting yourself in front of a window, getting that sunlight, that's always best. Um, if not, then get yourself some of these uh, light bulbs. They're cheap. Replace the, the, the ones that you have in your room. In general, you're not going to, you don't want to shine these lights right at you. They're too bright. I, I tell everybody to if you're going to get a light and you're, or if you're going to need to build a light, and here's the cheapest light you can build. Let me show you this right here. This is, I know, this is Amazon, but you can get these at Lowe's for like 10 bucks, okay? That says 920. They're like 12, 10, 12 bucks at Amazon. You get one of those, you get a bulb, you get parchment paper from Safeway or King Supers. And you dig in a drawer and you find yourself some binder clips. And you've now created a, a lamp that's portable that can clip anywhere and it has a diffuser built onto it. That you would pay a whole bunch of money for at Amazon. All right. That's what I have in my studio. I have four of those cans all pointing in different directions to deal with the weird light situation I have because I have five screens lighting my face up in the wrong color light. So that is the cheapest way to build a light that is, and they're durable. And if you break one, you're like, oh, darn, that was 20 bucks. Right. Any questions? Nope. I think we're good. Oh, wait. Um, Al asked, said, should there be two lights coming from two different directions? Well, that's a good question, Al. Uh, we are going to talk about light placement. It depends. I'm going to show you a couple different pictures. This is Gail. McLaughlin. She's just using window light, and she actually has a, she has another light in that room, but uh, this is her kitchen. She just does her broadcast in her kitchen, and we've had her on several times, and it's fine, mm -hmm. right? Light's a little harsh, but it works for her. This is Michael Bracamontes, who went all out with the lighting, and he's got himself a decked out little space there, and I just want to show that because he gets an A plus for his lighting effort <laughs> and his he camera. Does. Yeah, he, he just had everything going on. Um, he and Derek Crow, I think, were the best so far. Yeah, they had very similar, like, excellent uh, setups. Um, this is a background that you, if you really just don't have any good place to do it, you can get a pop-up background that you can put behind you. But I just don't recommend it. I recommend having at least eight feet of space behind you and building a set of stuff uh, that represents who you are. Here's the answer to your question on placement in terms of light. Um, it doesn't address three point. Three point is cool if you can do it, but generally you want light in front of you, not on top of you. You want it in front and eye level. And so, you know, that, that's that's basically what you're going to window light or or putting placing lights. It doesn't matter if it's coming from an angle. It just needs to be in front. And then depending on your room and your situation, you may need to have a little light behind you. But that can be accomplished by just bringing in a floor lamp, setting it on the ground, because you want, you want to have light underneath as well. The best thing to do is to, go, is to ask somebody to join a webinar with you or a hangout, whatever you're using, and just say, okay, how do I look? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? 
have them take screen grabs or, or info at uphillmedia.org and we'll, we'll get you set. This is what we do with every candidate we have on. Mm -hmm. That's it. I ran through all my slides. Holy shit. Wow. I took a half hour. Well, that's just what that's just what you should have taken. I suppose. There we go. Well, excellent. Well, thanks. And so candidates, activists, anybody who wants to get active uh, doing broadcasts and looking good at it. Yeah, yeah, seriously, uh, email us info at uphillmedia.org. Say this is what I'm trying to do. Can you help me? And we'll do our best to to help you. Yeah. And actually, that's a nice little segue into our little just our short little halftime promo for uphill media hang on do that except oh, uh, i want to i want to answer uh, uh dina mccombs uh paula mm -hmm. jean always has light coming off her glasses it's distracting yes the way you fix light coming off glasses is with diffuse light so mm -hmm. instead of having light shining directly on you like even the lights i was talking about the cans with the parchment paper that would probably still be too bright you would need to angle it away what i always tell people is if you don't have a window in front of you or if you're doing an interview at nighttime, it really doesn't matter Take the lights, aim them at the walls in front of you, and then we'll find the right angle, ceiling to wall to floor, so that we're lighting you up with that diffused light. And that's going to be enough to not, to, to not shine on the glasses. Best bet is to take off the glasses um, or uh, to... If, well, yeah, best bet is take off glasses, honestly. Well, if it's reflecting off the, the, the computer screen, you know, even just tilting the computer screen a little. Yes, can help that's We true. had that uh, with Gail last week, and that worked really well. Absolutely. And if you want to know how they get away with it on the news, it's because they don't even have glass in those glasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just it's frames. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke and mirror.